Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to review a little uh, challenge I threw at you uh, earlier in class, in uh, Flash class. And basically your goal was to create a little planet with the moon revolving around it, and the background was a twinkling star field. So, and we're using lots of symbols to create this, so I want to go ahead and create this myself. I'm going to start off, I've got a new Flash file here, I'm just going to create a new symbol, and this first symbol is going to be my uh, twinkling star field, okay? It'll be a movie clip symbol. I'll click OK. And let me scale this down. Let me let's see. I'll show all. Nah. Yeah, that's good enough. Let me just bring this back over here. So I can kind of see the my center point. So I'm editing this new movie clip symbol for my twinkling star field. And I think I'll size it down a bit. 75%. And my twinkling star field, I'm going to make it of a couple layers. I'm actually going to have the stars, and then above that, I'm going to have some uh, rotating arms one, rotating arms two. And I'll lock down everything except the stars. So I'm going to work on my stars layer first, actually, and I'll create one more layer here beneath stars. And this will be the backdrop. Let's do it this way. So my backdrop is simply going to be a large black rectangle. On top of that, I'm going to have a bunch of stars. And on top of that, I'm going to have these black arms that kind of rotate and they give a kind of a twinkling texture or a twinkling effect. So I'll start here. I'm on frame one of my backdrop and I'll create a rectangle using no stroke necessary and a black fill. And I'll just draw a really large rectangle that kind of fills up my working space. Done and done. Lock that down. Now I'm on frame one of my stars layer. And for my stars, I'll use a brush and white. And I'm just going to do a couple little dots here and there. I'll have to go all over, just a little section. And I'm going to change my brush size to a little bit smaller so I can scatter in some smaller stars throughout. I'm really just working in this upper left corner. Now that I've got that taken care of, I'll use my free transform tool and I'll select a chunk of stars, put my pointer on any one star so that I get my move handle, click with my mouse, hold down my control key, and then I can duplicate. And then let go of the mouse, let go of the control key. While my free transform tool is still on there, I can rotate in a different direction to kind of mix up the effect a bit. And I can do this a few times. Um, I can go ahead and select a bigger group click with my mouse, hold down my control key, I'll duplicate down here, and I'll rotate them around. There we go, and then I'll select another group of stars, click control, drag, and I'll just put those right over there. So now I've got a, a bunch of stars. Go ahead and lock that layer down, and now I'm going to work on the rotating arms one. Now to work on the rotating arms, it'd be a little bit easier if I didn't um, see my stars and backdrop, so I'm just going to hide both of those layers, and I'm only working on frame one of my rotating arms. This is going to be pretty easy. Um, I can use a straight line tool, or I could use a pencil tool. I'll use a pencil tool, um, black stroke color, and I want them, want them to be a little bit thicker. How about uh, something like a, a six? And I'm just going to kind of, off to on the left side here, I'll, I'll draw off a few big lines. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm going to right click on frame one of those rotating arms and I'm going to create a motion tween. And I want this to go kind of slow, so I'm going to drag this out so it lasts about I'll do 135 frames. Click anywhere within that motion. Use my rotation tool and I'll rotate one time going clockwise. That's fine. So basically now those those skinny arms are going to rotate like that. There we go. Oops, don't want to keep playing that. I'm going to lock that down, head over to frame one of my uh, rotating arms two. And very similar. Use my pencil, I'll use my pencil tool there, and maybe you know, I'll just I'll draw a few big lines over here. Doesn't matter if they're a little squiggly. And I'll do four this time. Right click on frame one, create a motion tween. I'll drag that one out all the way out to about frame 135. Click anywhere in that motion path and I'll rotate this one time going counterclockwise. So now I've got these arms here just kind of rotating around. 
And really the effect is when you can see the stars in the backdrop and I have to go out to frame 135 for these two other layers, my stars and backdrop, I'll press F5 to make a continuation. So now that the whole movie is lasting 135 frames, basically now when I press my enter key, you'll get this little twinkling stars effect. And try to ignore the little border lines down there at the bottom, you know, where you can see those spinning around, you see them right at the edges and stuff like that. That's of minor concern because once we put this out onto our stage, we'll size this particular symbol so that way it fills up our stage and you won't see that. So things are going pretty good there. So that's our twinkling star field. And if I jump over to my main scene, I can create a layer here called stars. And on frame one, let me scale my stage down a bit so I can kind of see the whole thing. I'll take my twinkling star field, pop it right on there using my selection tool. I'm gonna cover it up so it's all nice and covered. So now if I were to press my control enter to preview, there we go. And if, of course, if I wanted this to be a little bit bigger, I could resize my stage. So just as a quick example, I can move this off to the side, click on the stage, and maybe I'll make my stage 800 by 400. There we go. Stage is a little bit bigger. Let me zoom out so I can see a bit more. And then I can size this right on top of that stage. So now, once again, if I press Control Enter, there we go. So, got my twinkling star field. Next order of business is to create a new symbol of a moon revolving around a planet. So, I'm going to start working on that. I'm going to insert new symbol, and this is going to be my moon and planet movie clip symbol. I'll click OK. And I'm going to have a few layers here. I'm going to have a planet. Then I'm going to have a moon in the back and a moon in the front. And let's see, I'll just go ahead and lock down everything except my planet layer. I'll work on that first. And bear with me, I'm not an artist, so I'm just going to go ahead and create an oval, no stroke, a blue feel, blue fill. And there we go, there's my planet body. If I want to make sure that is centered, I'll select. Then I'll use my alignment tool to um, align that to the middle of my stage or working area. So there's the basic part of my planet. And then I'll just uh, make a few little, uh, let's see, I'll use my pen tool here. There we go. I'm just going to create a few little quickie continents. Then I'll use my selection tool, just kind of bend these lines out a bit. Okay, then I'll use my fill bucket and change them over to a green. All right, so there's my planet. Don't don't say I never showed you how to draw an excellent looking planet. Now my planet's going to be kind of fixed, so I'm just going to head out to about frame 48 and press F5 so my planet is always visible. And I'm going to go to moon front, lock down my planet, unlock my moon front, go to frame 1 and I'll draw a moon using my oval tool again. No stroke. I'm going to use a gradient fill. There we go. And let's see, I will use um, use my fill. Let me just kind of shift that a little bit. There we go. And I'll still use my oval tool. This time I'll just do a solid gray. And I'm just going to do a couple little quick craters on this moon. There we go. So there's my moon. One more up there. And let's see, I'll use my selection tool and just kind of position it here. It's kind of big, so I'll free transform it down, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so there's my moon over on this side of the planet. Oops, let me control Z. Notice I didn't select all my little uh, craters. So let's see, I'm back over here. Select all. 
move it. There we go. I'm going to right click on frame one, create a motion tween, and that'll go up to 24 frames, which is half of my animation sequence using my selection tool. I'll just drag that over to the right, kind of eyeball it. There we go. And then while it's selected here, I'll do a control C to copy. Lock down that layer, unlock moon back, go to frame 24 of my moon back layer, press F6, make a keyframe, and I'm going to do edit, paste in place. So basically the goal is here is that my moon in the front is going to disappear at frame 24, and then on frame 24 my moon in the back is going to reappear. I'll right click, create a motion tween. I want that motion to last out to frame 48, and on frame 48 that moon will be back over here on the left. So basically now the effect is passes in front, goes behind the back, passes in front, goes behind the back. To add a little bit of a uh, a um, little bit more realism to it. I'll go ahead and take my moon front, unlock that, and I'll just add a little bit of a bend to the arc, and then I'll take my moon back and add a little bend to the arc. So now it kind of bends around in front. And you could go a little bit further here. We could also say, all right, moon front about halfway around frame 12 or so free transform tool oh, let me unlock that and I'll make the moon just a little bit bigger and then on frame 24 I want it to go back down to normal size I'm gonna jump over to my motion editor and let me just scroll on down to where the scaling is there we go scale it back to 100 scale Y 100 so basically now the moon will kind of grow big as it passes in front and goes smaller again. Maybe a little bit too big, but I think we got the idea. For my timeline, I think I'll do something similar for the back. I'll go about the middle of the back path there and just kind of size it down just a little. And then uh, at the end of that animation sequence, back to my motion editor. And let's see, I need to be back over on scale. Scale it back to 100 for X and Y. Okay, looks good. Oops, didn't mean to really go into scene one, so let me double click on my moon and planet library item. So that's how things are looking. And if I thought that was still a little bit too big at there at that front, I could always head over to my frame 12. Make sure that's available to me. can make it a little smaller there so that way it's not growing quite as big. There we go. Alright, so once I've got that it's really just time to assemble my movie. If I go back to my scene, I've already got my twinkling star field on there. Let me create a new layer and this will be my moon and planet on frame one. I just take my moon and planet symbol, pop that right on here. I could size it a bit and once I think I've got it in a good location, control enter to test it out. And there we go. So I've got my moon and my planet and my twinkling star field. So what really made this easy to work with is just use of symbols and creating the motion tweens on the multiple layers. Have fun.